Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome. So, Sagittarius, this is going to be your you versus them reading. I'm going to go back and forth between you and the person you may be connecting with. Keep in mind that it's a general reading, so the roles may be reversed. Feel free to flip them if you need to. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't, and let's go ahead and get into it. So, in the crowning energy for you and the person you're connected with, you have the North Node of Destiny here, Aquarian energy for some of you. That could be in your chart or their chart or just simply the influencing vibes. But this is talking about fulfilling your purpose, uh, your soul school, your learning curves, uh, maturing through experience um, and developing yourself through the journey. So whatever's been going on in the relationship sector or possibly with this connection, it is part of the process, right? So um, let's see. You know what I just noticed? I have one card that doesn't belong in this deck in here. Do you see that? And I just looked at it and it's your card. <laughs> How, how crazy is that? Okay. <laughs> um, anyways, showing up in your uh, overall energy is the five of wands, which talks about feeling tested, having frustrations, um, maybe feeling like things have been a challenge for you lately. And showing up in the person's energy that you're connecting with is the death and rebirth card, Scorpio energy for some of you. Um, but this is just talking about endings, changes, transformation. So whoever you're connecting with, they may be um, going through a period of their life where it seems like there's either rapid changes or a new chapter beginning for them. They might be walking away from people, places, and things that no longer serve them. Or you might have walked away from this person. I'll take it as it resonates. But whatever's going on between you and this person, it is part of the grander design, all right? Because that's what this card talks about. So let's see what the recent past energy is that led up to the now. And then we're going to look at how you're perceiving it versus how they're perceiving it, how you genuinely feel underneath it all, and most likely <clears throat> future outcome. So... Sagittarius, recent past, five of pentacles, the queen of swords, and the six of pentacles. So Sagittarius, there might have been this feeling of like aloneness or isolation going on, um, or just a sense, even if you weren't alone, feeling alone, you know, um, it could have been that you have been spending a lot of time thinking about what it is that you want more of in your life, but yet still somewhat focused on the lack, or at least that was a struggle in the recent past of knowing what you want, but then having trouble taking your focus off of like the wrongness of something or the problems that were going on. But the thing about law of attraction is the more you talk about your problems, the more you think about your problems, the more you grow the problem um, versus the more you think about the solutions, the more you focus towards the solutions, the more you grow the solution. So you were kind of working against yourself, at least in the past energy, right? Um, and sometimes that can be really tricky. Some of you were not def definitely not intending on that, you know, um, but that's just kind of how our minds work. It's hard to wrap our mind around the fact that sometimes when we focus on what we don't have, we perpetuate more of what we don't have. And so I feel like there was um, something like that going on, okay, with you Sagittarius and or with this person. But I feel as we come into the present energy, there's this more open-minded take on things. Um, because you went through an experience, right, that you didn't really like, that you didn't really want, it has helped you to clarify better what it is that you want to go towards in your future. And this is a lot of future energy. This is a lot of future planning type of vibes. So some of you might really be in that space mentally of like, all right, so uh, where is this headed and what do I want, right? Also, just a side note for some of you, um, this could also be about finances, having a, a lack mentality around finances, um, you know, and that being the cause of maybe a financial drain in your life. 
uh, the way we think about money is really tricky too because when you don't have money what do you think about the fact that you don't have money but the more you think about not having money the more you don't have money you see how that works <laughs> so you have to find a way to pivot your mind to make yourself feel abundant whether that be giving appreciation for what you do have going well in your life that will create a sense of abundance and or allowing yourself to step out of the problem long enough um, to imagine the solution and then allow yourself to joyfully joyfully go about your life knowing that the solution will be presented to you via law of attraction so if it was finances that you were struggling with it had very little to do with the external circumstances although your brain will tell you it is the external circumstances it is the job that's not paying it's the situation it's this person's fault but in reality, it is all perceptual and it is the way that you think about money that prevents money from coming to you. So if you could change your mind about how you think about money, you could literally change your financial situation. So I know this is a love reading, but there's a channeled message about that coming through. So that, that's got to resonate with, you know, at least some of you that are watching. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a little law of attraction tip for you, Sagittarius. All right, so let's see this person's recent past energy. Ten of Cups. The Hangman. The Page of Cups. Wow. So this person has spent a lot of time thinking about love and relationships, family, connectivity, um, trying to see things from all different sides, from all different angles. I feel like that's what's really important to this person, or at least that's what's being highlighted in this time frame of their life. They could have been going through some endings when it came to, like I said, uh, financial structures for some of them, but also relationships possibly. But I feel like this person is kind of coming into this newer version of themselves or this newer energy, which is helping them to reprioritize and refocus what is most important to them and i feel like right now um, what's really really being highlighted for them is a sense of belonging um a sense of love and support in their life um and or wanting to give that uh to others or to this connection sagittarius so let's go deeper and see what's the perception and the current energy for sagittarius Who, I'm getting the song Focus On Me by her, and I can't remember what Zodiac sign that was for. I think it was for Taurus. If you're connecting with Taurus, maybe check out that reading. But, okay, so in the current energy, the Two of Pentacles, the Two of Wands, and the Eight of Cups. So again, there does seem to be some back and forth going on in the headspace. It's almost like you're wanting to look into the future, but... But it's like the past keeps beckoning your name. Is that an actual phrase? Um, <laughs> keeps calling your name. It's like being stuck between a rock and a hard place, I feel. And it's interesting, right? See, because you keep, you keep thinking about Sagittarius, what you've walked away from to get where you're at now. But just simply by giving focus to what you've walked away from, you are recreating that in the energy right here right now because even though we like to think of the past um, and, and the future and the present being different timelines there actually is only ever one time and that's right here and right now because that's the only time you can ever experience and that you've ever experienced um, so it's almost like every time you look towards the past you repurpose it again in the now energy and relive it on an emotional basis right and that's why they say life is very much an emotional journey not so much about the things that we're physically doing out here in the physical world but how we're feeling about that as we go through our daily activities and so even though you might have physically moved away from a situation on an emotional level you keep recreating it um, unintentionally, I feel, by thinking about what you had, what you walked away from, or want to walk away from. Um, it's like you're trying to carve out your future, but you keep using the past as a reference, which is 
not in and of itself a bad thing unless you're giving an exorbitant amount of thought to that. And I bet you recognize that on the days that you're not fully present in the now are the days you probably feel your worst, um, where the days you might feel the most tension in your body or the most frustration or when you feel tested, right? So I do feel like there's that tested energy coming through again or that feeling of being tested by the universe. And, and the message really is, is that you're not being tested as much as law of attraction is just simply doing what it does best, which is responding to what you're giving focus to. And um, it's not a curse and it is not a blessing. It just is how the universal law works. Um, but you can pivot out of this, right? So some of you are getting ready though to break free of this. Now it might be not until after the retrograde. Um, so we're looking more towards October. So it is kind of hard not to go into that energy when we have a retrograde upon us as well as a Uranus retrograde going on. So, but you will break free of that energy, right? Just don't, um, don't overdo it. So let's see person you're connecting with. What's going on in their headspace? Temperance. Wow. Okay. Nine of swords, seven of wands, and the ten of pentacles. Okay, so also, before I started this reading, I don't know why this is popping back into my head, but I, I didn't think it was relevant, but I do think it's relevant now. Um, I restarted the video three separate times. Um, I just kept getting frustrated or the timing wasn't right or, you know, something happened. So I feel like Sagittarius, because they're saying third time, actually fourth time's a charm, <laughs> but take it as it resonates. There could have been like a repeated cycle, perhaps three or four cycles uh, in your relationship life. Doesn't necessarily need to be with this person, but some of you, yes, with this person, where it's like you just kept either coming back around to the same issue or it was chance after chance after chance. Um, or just like the timing wasn't lining up with something, okay? So uh, it could be, like I said, related to the specific connection or it could just be in relationships in general, um, running into the same issues. And some of you, I'm hearing it's your relationship with money, okay? Um, <laughs> because relationships just aren't about another person. We have a relationship with everything in our life. This is a relationship-based universe. We have a relationship with money. We have a relationship <laughs> with our things, with the way we think about life, our relationship with ourself, etc. Everything is relational. But anyways, take it, take it as it's resonating with you. Okay, so this person in their headspace is temperance, nine of swords, seven of wands, ten of pentacles. So they too have a little bit of back and forth going on, but it's more so in the emotions. Um, it's like this person gets really anxious about what they can't foresee, um, you know, or they tend to like dream up worst case scenarios when it comes to this connection or just in general. Then, then they end up getting like guarded and defensive over almost nothing, something that they've imagined in their mind, right? Um, when really what they're wanting is more stability and security, but they kind of get in their own way with that type of thinking. It's like, you know, yeah, <laughs> this is, have you ever, okay. To give you an example of what I mean by that is like this person could like, out of paranoia, conjure up this idea that you've done something that you know you did not do, right? But they get so worked up over it, even though you, it didn't actually happen or you didn't actually do it, they still live out their paranoia through their mind. Because again, life is 
an emotional journey. So even if it's not true or real or actually happening, it's happening in the internal world, right? Um, because we are all masters of our internal world. So it's like, Sometimes this person really drives themselves insane over their own stinking thinking, you know? Um, that's I don't feel like it's always grounded in reality either, Sagittarius. So that's an interesting message to get, isn't it? So let's go deeper into the emotional space and see What's going on in the heart space underneath it all? Five of Swords. The Emperor. Wow, the Three of Swords. And the Wheel of Fortune. So, Sagittarius, it could be that... Um, that you've suffered quite a few battle scars, eh? Um, this is very Sagittarius-like to do. But, I mean, there's a couple other zodiac signs that will do this as well. Scorpio and Aquarius, notably two others that will do this. Sometimes you pretend to be stronger than you really feel. Okay? It's a pride thing. Um, well, Leos do this too. And I can relate as an Aquarius with Sagittarius in my chart. Um, it's like wanting so badly to put on that strong face, that strong warrior Sagittarius paint, so to speak. That like, yeah, I've got this. You know, I'm in charge. I know what I'm doing. I'm empowered. But then underneath that, doubting yourself, feeling hurt feeling disconnected, unsure, uncertain, but not wanting to admit that or ask for help. Not that I'm trying to call you out or anything, but I mean, I'm going to say what I see in the cards. It's like this essence of, um, and I don't want to say you never got it, right? Because sometimes I do feel like, okay, you had a bad day, but then you climbed out of that hole and then, okay, you kind of had another bad day, a really bad day. And then, all right, the day turns, you come out on top again. So some of you, it's this roller coaster, right? Um, and I hear that song in my head, you had a bad day. Da, da, da. I don't know words to it. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, it's like... I get too that there might be something going on that's really difficult for you to understand, like the motive of something or why something happened or how, or there seems to be a lot of misunderstandings going on in the heart space or this divided energy between like wanting to be strong and empowered but also not feeling your best at times. And geez, on those days, Sagittarius, give yourself grace. It's okay, right, to be vulnerable. We don't have to be strong all the time. And in fact, it's not even good for us to do that. Like, you need to honor all of your emotions. And uh, if you're on the days that you're feeling tested, just admit that, you know, and then give yourself a little bit of grace to recover. So let's see this person's um, emotional space for pentacles. King of pentacles. Page of Swords in the reverse. Wow. Okay, let's see what else is going on in this person's emotional space. <laughs> One more card. Wow, the Ten of Wands. 
So both of you seem to be having a difficult time underneath it all, right? Like, I feel like this person really needs to address their trust issues. All right. It seems to be a blockage for them. Um, it definitely gets into their head. They might even have paranoid thought um, and be calling it intuition. Okay. So, because there's a very fine line between like paranoia and intuition, right? One is based in reality. One is not. Well, how do you tell the difference? Uh, paranoia usually stems from fear and insecurity. Intuition stems from love and security. So if this person is consistently in a state of fear or insecurity or having these issues, then likely when they think they're having intuitive hits, they're actually having paranoid thoughts. Um, because I, I feel like this person has not practiced their alignment uh, or, or at least right now, they're not strong enough in alignment to trust maybe um, their thoughts, right? <laughs> That's the tricky, tricky thing, right? About intuition versus paranoia. But I feel like this person tends to lean more towards, yeah, the trust issues, the paranoia. Um, they get stuck on things. They could be uh, very stubborn as well. Um, they read in between the lines when maybe they don't really need to, which makes things more difficult for them, which makes things feel heavier than they need to feel and um, gets them all wrapped up in the problem as well when what they're really wanting is connectivity and love. So there are they are the own, only holdout to this becoming a reality in their life. And again, I don't think they're intentionally doing it. It's just like, this person's thought processes are not really serving them or serving their highest purpose right now. So very, like I said, congruent with the planetary alignments right now with the retrogrades here. So I, I think that, I don't think that's the cause, but I definitely think it could intensify that energy. All right. So let's go deeper and see what the most likely future outcome looks like for my Sagittarius. The Hangman. Temperance. The Four of Swords. Got you had a bad day. Wow, Seven of Cups and the Ace of Cups. I'm oh, sorry, the Seven of Swords and this. I can't speak. The Seven of Swords and the Ace of Cups. So Sagittarius, this is you show you showing up in your own reading, which is good. This is like you getting some new insights and new perspective during this time frame that helps you to feel a little bit more at ease. At ease, ease. My gosh, what the heck? What is going on with my lips? Hello at ease. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a much more peaceful energy that you'll be going into, which is nice, right? So, and sometimes that's really needed after we kind of overdo it. Uh, needing like a day off or a day to rest or a day to rest our mind. Um, I feel like you've taken on quite a bit, but... There is a new perspective coming in. And sometimes this card talks about enlightenment, um, answers showing up, solutions showing up, and that allowing you to sleep a little bit easier at night. But there is still this message here about not feeling like you can fully trust your emotions or not being completely honest with how you're feeling. And hmm, isn't that interesting? So there seems to be like trust issues showing up again but it's on your side and you've attracted someone who has trust issues isn't that interesting <laughs> it could be that you too have trouble trusting your own heart or the intentions of other people. Maybe you have reason to feel that way. Maybe you've been through things in the past that have tested you and given you reason to pause, right? Maybe you think it's naive to fully put your heart on your sleeve, but it's almost like you can't really attract that beautiful, vulnerable, authentic love unless you become 
and allow yourself to become that vulnerable, beautiful, loving person. And that's easier said than done, right? This is what they call the process or the journey of enlightenment is, is discarding all of the quote unquote bad things that have happened to us and the conditioning that has made us believe we are less than and coming back to our center, which is the remembrance that we are pure, positive, loving energy. And it's okay to trust in the universe and that Source and God is also made up of the same pure, positive, loving energy of which you are uh, connected to at all times. But learning to trust again when you feel you have reason not to is, is difficult. It's difficult, right? It requires faith. But not faith in other people, faith in your ability to be okay, no matter what happens. And see, now that's the thing that's come out of everything that has happened to you up until now. Uh, not necessarily faith in other people, but the knowing that you got you at the end of the day, or you wouldn't be here right now. And you certainly wouldn't be at this reading that you really do got yourself. You really are going to always catch yourself and you really will be okay. That's the type of faith that they're asking you to have. And the rest, well, everything is working out for you. Trust that. You know, they say it's not so much if other people hold good intention for us because the intentions they hold are their karma, a.k.a. their attraction point. It matters only what our intentions are for them because that is our karma, a.k.a. our attraction point. So if you hold good intentions, the universe will continually respond to that intention unless you let yourself get into a state of fear over someone else and what they're thinking, what they're doing, and blah, blah, blah. And now you've muddied the water of your own vibration. And um, that's how we attract things we don't want. So... Keep that in mind, Sagittarius, as you start to explore this connection, as you start to explore your new life, your future life, relationships in general, that as long as you can stay in your own lane, so to speak, and make sure your heart is pure, that's the only thing you have to worry about. And it's also the only thing you have control over anyways. So let's see this person's um, most likely future outcome. The Hermit. The Four of Wands, the Queen of Cups, the Knight of Swords. So there's some sort of emotional communication coming through during this time frame. What is it about? Give me one more card on that. Two of Cups. Woo! Okay, about this connection, about this relationship. Uh, this could be soulmate connection that you are connecting with. Um, I feel like this person's done a lot of internal reflection on what they want when it comes to their stability, their security, but also relationships and family, home, okay? That was what was crowning this person's energy, meaning it's something that's heavy on their mind, and yet they get so fearful and paranoid about it that they actually block them themselves from receiving the blessings that the universe is wanting to bestow upon them. Um, and is stemming from their own paranoias, their own trust issues, which is weighing them down, right? And so they're, they're needing to do a little bit of self-reflection on that. Um, and they're being led in that direction to kind of reflect on what, where is this coming from and what do they really want? And what they really want, I feel, is a true connection or this connection with you, Sagittarius, um, but take it as it resonates. And there seems to be like this very emotional response coming out of this person. Or there could be a very emotional uh, response coming from you um, that somehow moves things forward or connects the two of you. So I, I do feel like this person wanting to, after a period of self-reflection and let, feeling really feeling their emotions and how they feel that they are then feeling the urge to 
react or respond, okay? Um, and they, they're specifically, I keep wanting to say communicate something to you, but they keep saying no, re react or respond in a certain kind of way towards the connection. So it may not be direct communication for some of you, but there'll be some sort of reaction or response. But take it as it resonates. Um, I just feel like it could be that this person is recognizing, right, like the value of the connection. Um, but let me get one more on this. All right. Let's see. I can still hear that song in my head, by the way. So you had a bad day. Mm -hmm. oh, I hope that doesn't stay stuck in my head. No offense to that artist, but not my favorite song. All right, so I wanted to know more about what the emotional response or reaction is. Um, and it's something that they've discovered about themselves, something that they've examined or maybe discovered about the connection. This person seems to be on this path of self-discovery, and yet it's enveloped around the connection or relationship. And that could be because there, every relationship that's important to us has a spiritual meaning. It could be that for this person, it's pushing them to discover more about themselves through the connection. And for you, Sagittarius, it seems to be more about learning how to trust your own emotions, but also know when to be strong and know when it's okay to be vulnerable. So let's see what the overall guidance is for the both of you. Okay, they have inspire passion. Oh, okay. You have gratitude and then support. I didn't mean to get a third card, but I did. So their card says, life devoid of passion can be boring, uninspired, that slowly drains the soul. Now is the time to reignite passion and rejoin life. This is an opportunity to set new goals, which will in turn reconnect you with all that is sacred. So there's some sort of spark being lit under this person that's inspiring passion within them to go for what they want. You have the card of gratitude, Sagittarius. So this says life is one big continuous circle of giving and receiving. Be thankful for who and what's in your life instead of complaining about what you don't have. If you focus on gratitude, you'll attract prosperity and abundance. I can't make that up. That was the original message I had at the beginning of the reading. By focusing on gratitude, you will attract prosperity and abundance. And then this came out. I, I didn't ask for a third card, but I'll read it. This came out in between you and this person that you're connecting with. And it says, people come into your life for many reasons. Some you learn from and then they move on. Others return often because you need to learn more. And some remain beside you throughout your entire life. Wow. Very interesting guidance card, Sagittarius. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this reading and that it resonated with you. Zodiac signs that you could be dealing with or have in your own birth chart. I have um, Virgo here. I have Capricorn, Taurus. Perhaps another Sagittarius, Pisces, Scorpio, Aquarius, uh, Aries. Mm, yes, those are the predominant signs that I'm seeing. But keep in mind, it's a general reading. So um, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If it did resonate, please do let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to give me a like, share, and subscribe if you haven't yet. You can find me on Facebook where I'm going to be doing a full moon collective reading for $9.99. You can join me for the group reading. I'm going to read the energy of the group. And then I'm also going to select people out of the chat to do uh, pull a card for or do a channeled message for. So if you want the opportunity to ask your question and get a full moon reading, make sure you check out the event and purchase a ticket on my Facebook. It is linked down in the description box below as well as in the about section. Um, but you can also find me, FYI guys, on Instagram and TikTok also linked below. Either way, I'm wishing you the very, very best, Sagittarius. And until next time, my friends, namaste.